So my name is Jess Butler. I am program director with OpenStreetMap US. And I'm here to talk to you today about OpenStreetMap, but more importantly, here to share about our community and the people behind this map data. So before we get further, uh, for the people here in the room, raise your hand if you've ever used OpenStreetMap data or if you use it currently. Okay, a few of you. I've been asking that question since about 2014. And it's always interesting to see over time how those hands are going up more and more. Um, and if you're at home, drop that in the chat as well. It'll be interesting to see how many people are using OpenStreetMap. If you didn't raise your hand though, uh, good chance that you're already using OpenStreetMap data and you don't even realize it yet. And if you did raise your hand, there's probably also ways that you are using OSM that you may not even realize. So just to give a few examples before we dive into the community aspect of this, if you've ever looked at a map, say on New York Times, Washington Post, LA Times, really any major magazine, newspaper, website, there's a strong chance that you have read or looked at OSM data. It's always a good hint to look in the corner of a map and look for that OpenStreetMap contributors icon in the corner. Another way that you've probably used OpenStreetMap before, and actually I think this applies to absolutely everyone here. Um, it's a little harder to tell from this image, um, but if in recent years you've ever received an Amazon package to your doorstep, well, that got to you in part because of OpenStreetMap data. Uh, Amazon Web Services, their location-based services, use OpenStreetMap as part of their routing and navigation. Other location-based services like Uber and Lyft, they're also using OpenStreetMap in the background. So like I said, you're probably using this more than you actually realize. And my favorite, I always have to toss in here, if you've ever played Pokemon Go, you've virtually walked around in OpenStreetMap. So it's not just these companies, there are small and large corporations all over the world using OpenStreetMap. And it's not just companies and businesses, organizations, nonprofits, governments, the United Nations, Facebook, Microsoft, it's all over the place. But the number of people who are using OpenStreetMap data and for various purposes is growing every single day. But why? What is it about OpenStreetMap that is bringing all these people to a single data set? It really boils down to what OpenStreetMap is and how it's structured. So OpenStreetMap, or I'll say OSM quite a few times during this presentation, so I'll just go with that. Um, OSM is the world's largest freely editable open source geospatial database in the world. Anyone anywhere is able to access this data, they can edit, they can modify it, they can download it for free, use it for whatever purpose they need. Of course, hopefully with attribution. <laughs> and that's why we like to call OpenStreetMap the Wikipedia of maps. It's a great way of framing it. And because of that, OpenStreetMap really has disrupted the power dynamic of who controls maps and geospatial data in our world. For the longest time, who owned map data, who controlled what was map, was really held by governments and large corporations. Uh, so say if you lived in a small village in Western Tanzania, and there was no company that had an interest in mapping your area, your entire village may not exist on a map or previously. And that's where OpenStreetMap comes in. Because anyone anywhere has the power to edit this map, they have any reason to add, add data, edit data, they can. And so that's completely transformed how we look at geospatial data and who gets to decide what is on the map. And pretty early on after OpenStreetMap was developed, people started coming up with crazy ideas on how we could use this data to improve lives or even save lives. Early on, 
Red Cross, Doctors Without Borders, organizations that are working in humanitarian and disaster crises realized they actually needed this data to save lives, figure out where people were, because geospatial data like this didn't exist. There were places that people were working where there just wasn't data on where resources like hospitals or even people's homes, where those were in a crisis. Or if it did exist, it was often outdated or it was behind a paywall. OpenStreetMap changed that. So when a disaster occurred, you could quickly ask mappers anywhere in the world to help fill that data gap. And it's not just organizations like Red Cross or MSF. The local organizations started developing all around the world because they realized the power of open source geospatial data, what they could do locally to change their own lives, to change their neighbors' lives. This is a picture from Tanzania, a local organization that's close to my heart, Open Map Development Tanzania. They do exactly this. They work in local communities in Dar es Salaam and Mwanza. They're doing community participatory mapping to help local residents use map data to change their lives, to change how governments interact with them, how policies are made. So these communities are using OpenStreetMap in their day-to-day -day life, mapping what's important to them so that when we're trying to determine if a community is at risk of disasters, that information is coming from the communities. When governments want to work with them to improve their solid waste management, they're coming to the communities now because that's where the power of the map data is. It's with the communities. All, tons of use cases that this organization is doing all the way to urban heat island effects and tree canopy in Dar es Salaam. This is just one example of a local organization that is completely developed around the idea of localizing the power behind OpenStreetMap. And not just organizations, communities of people just sprung up all around the world because they come from all walks of life, but they're interested for one reason or another in OpenStreetMap or mapped data. Some people want to make sure that their governments are better representing them, or they want better food service through Grab. They want to make sure that they're getting their pizza delivered to them, um, or they want to make sure that resources are better, better distributed, that schools are on the map to make sure that all kids are getting the resources that they need. These communities are coming out of people who are mappers, who are programmers, and sometimes neither. They're just people who want to make a difference and maps have the power of democratizing that language, of bringing everyone to a level playing field. And this isn't just happening internationally. In fact, this is happening in the US at such a hyper-local level that it's astonishing. And I just have a few of my favorite examples to share with you today. So places like Columbus in Ohio have mappers who have come together over the issue of sidewalk accessibility. People realize that some sidewalks are completely impassable for people who are in a wheelchair, or there wasn't any good routing system for people who had mobility challenges. Let's make a map of that. Let's get that data out there so that those improvements to infrastructure can be made. And also so that routing systems can better serve people who have those accessibility challenges. Other groups come together just to have fun mapping parties, work on projects together. Um, this group, Map Time Baltimore, definitely one great example. Um, but they also come together over really impactful projects. In particular, in this one, Map Time Baltimore came together uh, to support a local nonprofit that was working to improve ch children's access to playgrounds in the city. If you're going to improve access to playgrounds, you need to know where they are. So that's what MapTime Baltimore did. They mapped the playgrounds and collaborated with this nonprofit so they could have better data and make impactful decisions on where these playgrounds were. Our mappers come together over shared interests. Um, just in the past year, mappers in New York City came together for Open Data Week they're all interested in biking. They wanted to, my, to map the bike parking spots uh, across the city. Mappers are using it 
as a part of their toolkit and advocacy. So here we have a mapper who use OpenStreetMap as one of her tools to save the split oak forest in, in Florida. Using OpenStreetMap as a way to communicate that this forest was valuable, that the community used it, that there were features that the community didn't want to see lost and turned into a toll highway. And it's not just mapping. Our community comes together to develop tools as well. We have a whole ecosystem of tools uh, centered around this open geospatial data. So in 2020, when news hit that US Postal Service boxes were being removed, members of our community came together and developed an application, Spot the Box, to map and monitor those boxes to help make sure that we understood across the country what was happening could monitor that from a geospatial view. Students around the country are using OpenStreetMap in really creative and interesting ways. At Texas Tech University, a group of students are collaborating with a nonprofit in their area to use OpenStreetMap to reduce economic disparities in their area, especially in parts of their town where traditional segregation lines have led to more economic disparity. In San Francisco, we have a group of mappers called Resiliency Mappers, and they come together to add data to OpenStreetMap and build maps that are specifically designed for community emergency responders. So that when a disaster happens in their area, they're not sorting through the different mobile applications on their phone and all the data that exists and said that they have maps on hand, ready to go, that's exactly what they need to respond to a disaster. So we have communities all across the country and the world, but here in the US, we have these local communities coming together in person when we can, uh, as well as virtually to socialize, but also coming together in times of need, which is the amazing part about this side of the community. Like I mentioned before, disasters are a common use case of OpenStreetMap. And in the US, it's no different. The Red Cross and FEMA rely on OpenStreetMap data to understand how to respond uh, and recover from disasters. So when that occurs, the community activates. We make sure that the data available to those who need it whether it's wildland fire crews in Colorado actively downloading OpenStreetMap data to know where houses are that could be at risk, to firefighters and crews that have no idea what OSM is, but it's in their phone. We wanna make sure that everyone on that spectrum has the most up-to-date and accurate data so that when it's needed, it's there. So how is this all organized? How do you take all these different groups, all these use cases and communities and individuals doing all these different things with OSM, how, how do you bring them together? How do you maintain a community like this? At the global level, we have the OSM Foundation and they work to maintain the infrastructure, the servers behind OpenStreetMap, as well as to ensure that local communities and chapters are growing around the world. And that's where we are. That's where I come from. Um, OpenStreetMap US is the local chapter and a nonprofit here in the US. And our whole goal is to grow everything I just showed you before, to keep that energy growing, to support communities coming together and to foster new growth and to make sure that the data quality and the data here in the US is strong. We also spend a lot of time working to build this community and create a fun, active environment. It's been a lot of virtual events in the past two years, which I'm sure everyone here is quite used to, but a uh, shining light out of that, it turns out when you have a national community or even broader, these virtual events are a great way for us to get to know each other besides our the mappers just within our vicinity. But we also have one of my favorite events, <laughs> State of the Map, uh, State of the Map US. And this is something that we've held for 10 years now. And this brings together every actor that I've talked about today, every stakeholder 
type of data user that you can imagine is coming to these events to collaborate and to discuss. You have the corporations and the companies that are using OpenStreetMap in their applications, the community mappers who are doing this for fun or to make sure that their community is on the map for say a disaster response. Students, we have just about everyone coming in, not just from within the US, but outside the US as well and coming together to help grow and innovate. OpenStreetMap US also plays a crucial role as we sit at the crossroads of all of these different stakeholders. So we serve a strong role in making sure this collaboration happens effectively between government agencies that are using this data, those corporate partners who are using data in their applications, community mappers, and even those who don't realize that they're using OpenStreetMap on a day-to-day -day basis. So as an example, in your national parks, if you're on a hiking trail, we're working with all of these different partners to make sure that the data you're using to explore and navigate and hike, that data is up to date and ready to go for you. We also have a few programs that we support like Teach OSM. We're working with teachers across the country to make sure that students are getting access to learn through OpenStreetMap. And not only does it enhance their learning of geography and social studies by giving a hands-on service learning component to their education, but through this, we're growing the next generation of open source contributors. I mean, these students don't realize this is the entryway into everything beyond just OpenStreetMap, but what we're all here at this conference here today for. And we're also partnering with nonprofits, other organizations around the US who are, could use OpenStreetMap data to do good. It could be environmental, social, civic justice organizations who are already doing great work, but some free geospatial data could make that a lot better. So inspired by a lot of the work that our community has already been doing, like the Map Time Be More group that was mapping playgrounds, we're beginning to do more of that. And so just the example here, we recently partnered with Kaboom, which is a national nonprofit working to eliminate place-based inequity in the US. So in six weeks, we mapped all the playgrounds in Philadelphia because that was a need. And so we want to grow that. We want to apply that in other ways as well. But at the end of the day, it all comes back to the people that make up OpenStreetMap, the community. So everyone that's here today, either in person or virtually, I invite you to join our community, become a part of this. But being part of our community requires you to complete a few challenges. So one, next time you see a map in the wild, check to see if it's OpenStreetMap. Usually you can tell with little OpenStreetMap contributors in the corner. And if it is OpenStreetMap data, I just ask you to take a moment and think about the people, the community that might have created that data. If you're looking at your grocery store on OpenStreetMap, maybe that data is also being used by nonprofits to understand food deserts and food scarcity within your city. And then the most important part of this challenge is sign up and contribute. That's the only way we're gonna to continue to grow this and that if you're using OpenStreetMap, become a steward of the data that you're using and that you're using for your work. So contribute, that can be just mapping your house. That can be helping with source code. There's a lot of tools within our ecosystem and lots of places to plug in. And finally, I alluded to this earlier, we are doing our in-person Say the Map conference again. And we're really excited about it. It'll be really nice just like this to get people all into the same room, again, talking about OpenStreetMap and ways we can be building and innovating within this community. So I invite you all to attend if you can. Um, it's going to be in Tucson in April. We just opened our call for proposals recently. So please, if you have any inkling of idea of how you might want to contribute and join the conversation with our community, please do. And if you are a user of that data, say 
your company uses OpenStreetMap data. It does take a lot to put together these conferences and bring together all these people. So definitely consider giving back to, your, to the community. Um, we take support from large and small businesses alike. And if you are interested in joining, uh, but might not be able to make it on your own, we do have scholarships available. So with that, happy mapping and thank you. <laughs>